As you use Figma more and more, you'll soon find yourself duplicating things again and again. And then you'll see how you keep changing things in those duplications. This is incredibly annoying and just a complete waste of time. Luckily though, in Figma, we have something called components. And in this video, I'll teach you what they are and how to use them so that you can stop wasting time while designing. Now, if you want to learn more about Figma, make sure you check out the next video here. Number one, what are components? I usually think of components as templates templates for different elements that you want to reuse on your website, your app, or whatever you're creating in Figma. So it could be a button, it could be an icon, it could be whatever. If you go to the assets panel in the top left of your Figma UI, you will get this. You will get a search field and you'll get this will drop down here with your local components. And if you use external components from other libraries, you will see those here as well. But let's focus on these for now. These are the components we've created in our document here. So what you see is this button component right here and these two icon components. I can grab one of these, drag them out onto my canvas, just like this. And there we have our component with all the settings in the right side panel here that we've set to it. And we will get into these settings in just a bit, but that's what a component is. Now, the second step here is we want to look at variants. What are variants and how do they relate to components? So when we create a component, we can create a button once again, Let's take the button as an example. So we create our button and we have the original state. If we want this button to have a different look when we hover it, what we do is we create a variant of this button where it's hovered. So that's what we see here. And maybe we also want different types of buttons. So maybe this is the primary button with a fill color, but we also might want a secondary button like this with just a stroke. This would also be a variant. And the hover state of this button, this secondary button would also be a variant. And the way we create variants is also very simple. Once we create a component, in the same spot in the top, we just click add variant. Now you'll see exactly how we do this in two steps here. But before that, let's look a bit closer at component properties because component properties allow us to minimize the amount of variants that we create. You could imagine how big a canvas of component variants could become if we would create variants for everything. Well, that's where component properties help us. So what are component properties? If I target or select this button here, you'll see in the right sidebar here in my Figma UI that I have a bunch of settings. We have something that says type here. I can change from primary to secondary. I can choose to show this icon or not show it. I could change the icon that we show like this. We could choose to show the text or not. We could even change the actual content in the text like this. And this is the power of component properties because if we would have to create component variants for each of these instances, the amount of components we would have would be much, much larger. So that's component properties. Now in the fourth step here, we're going to recreate this together. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to add a text layer and I'll call it button or I'll write button. I'll then give it an auto layout. And if you want to learn more about auto layouts, we do have a video on that in the top right corner right now. I'll give it some padding on the sides. So padding vertically, increase the rounding, call it button. And there we have a button. Now with this button, we can create a component. So I go here to the top, I click create component. And there we have our first 
button component. From this, we can also add some more variants. So I would go to the same place, click add variant. Now we have two variants of one single button. They look the same currently, but we want them to be different. This is gonna be the default state. So I'll go to the menu here, change this from property to say state. Then I'll go to the second one that currently is named variant two, and I'll call this hovered. And for the hovered state, let's keep it simple and just use opacity. So 50% opacity, and that's our first button. And now we can find it here in the assets panel. I can drag it onto my canvas, just like this. And I can go here to the right sidebar and change the state from default to hovered, from hovered to default. That's the first step. Now we want to add some component properties to this. The first thing we can add is a dynamic way for us to change the content. And in this case, the text content in this button. And the way I do that is I target the text in all of our variants and I go here to the right side panel where it says content. From here, I can find this icon. And this is the way for us to create component properties. And here we create the text property. So I hit this and I get this menu where I can change the name. So what is this gonna be called? I think text makes sense in this case. The value, what is gonna be the default value? Button works, we can change this if we want to, but I think button is okay for now. I'll hit create property and there we have it. Now, if we go back to the component we dragged out and we look at the right sidebar here again, you can see that text is now here and we have this field here where we can change the content and it changes dynamically. So that's the first component property. You could add many different component properties, anything from this one that says layer where you can actually hide and show stuff. So if we create this Boolean property here, this will allow us to show or hide the text. So I changed the name to show text and we have a default value. So it's gonna be true. We wanna show the text as a default. Now if I create this property here, we go back to our button. Now we have this toggle switch here. If I hit it, the text disappears and reappears when I click it again. We could go to our assets panel here. We could drag in one of the other components we created. So this icon component, I could copy this, go into my button here, place it inside of the button, sorry, in this button first. I could expand this so that we see what happens and reposition it a bit. So now we have an icon in the first button. We want the same icon in the hovered state. I'll reposition again, change the spacing a bit. And there we go. Now we have the icon here in this same button. You can see how it just dynamically updated, but we don't have any settings for the icon just yet. And that's what we want to add now. So I'll target the icon and I'll go here again to our right sidebar. The first thing I'll add is this. Once again, for the layer, so I'll apply a Boolean property. And this time we won't use show text. We will create a new one that is specific to the icon. So I hit create property. And now this says show layers, but I think it should say show icon. And maybe by default, this should be false. So we don't show the icon by default. I'll create the property and you can see how it disappears by default. Now, if I click this button here again, you can see we have this new toggle switch. If I hit it, we show the icon. If I hit it again, we hide it. Pretty cool, huh? Now, the last thing I wanna show you is a way for us to actually switch which type of icon we use in here. And once again, we're gonna use the same 
icon or the same symbol here is what we're looking for to create this effect. So we click here on create instance swap property, hit that and we get this menu. Now this could be called maybe icon. So what type of icon are we going to use? The default value? Should it be the chevron? Should it be maximize? Doesn't really matter in this case, but you could choose whatever you want. The last thing we can use here is the preferred values. So in case you have a component that has a couple of preferred values. So let's say four icons that that particular component is going to be using. You could add those four values here and those would be shown here in the right sidebar. So if you have hundreds of icons, this is very helpful because then you reduce the amount of icons you have to go through when you want to pick the right one. So I create this property. Boom. There we have that property created. If I go back to this button again and I hit show icon, then this menu turns up. In here, I can change what icon we choose or what icon we show. If I want to mess around a bit with the layout and the settings here, you go to the component, so you click it, and then from here, you can change the position of your values just like this. Usually I like to have show as the first value. And then if it's toggled, then you'll see the editable setting below it just like this. So that is how you create components with variants and component properties. Until the next one, have a great life. We'll talk soon. Ciao.